Actually, I feel like playing games today. Do you like gaming, Sean? Yeah, I do like gaming, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, many computer scientists like me got into uh, computers in the first place because we do like games um, and we think like, okay, I'm gonna go to university, I'm gonna learn how to program and in no time I will be able to do a very, very cool game with visual graphics and stuff like that. Uh, rarely that's the case, but what I want to do in this video today is to show you that with a little bit of knowledge of programming and using a library, you can do something very cool in Python. That's actually what I want to do. I want to start off actually showing the end result uh, of this video. No, it's actually not the video, but I'm going to show you a game here to start with uh, that my students implemented recently. So this is a game, uh, you can say zombie uh, apocalypse, but they actually give you a bit of instructions to begin with. So that's my friend Torsten showing how the game works. That's myself uh, as well. And I'm gonna start playing. Ooh. And actually pretty bad. But I want to get this one because you will see this one is super fun. Boom. I love my job, Sean. <laughs> this is an example of what you can do with Pygame, which is the library I'm gonna be using today. Uh, but it's not the game I'm gonna be implementing actually. So my game is when I, it's gonna be way easier because we don't have time to implement that kind of game. But that was done actually by a group of three people uh, working for a month worth of time uh, on the game for, from people that didn't have any experience programming before. So it's actually pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very good. What we're gonna be doing today is to play a very classic game that everybody knows in computer science, which is the Pong game. Actually, my very good friend Steve already show this game and actually use this game as a good example to show what object-oriented programming is, right? So we're gonna actually rely on the concept of object-oriented programming for, for this uh, game. So I want to show you very quickly what the game is all about. So I'm gonna draw here how the screen will look like. So basically the idea is that you normally have a paddle, a bat, and you're gonna have a ball. And typically you're gonna have actually a two players game in which you have another paddle on the other side and the idea is to push this ball through so you win, right? So that's the main thing. But today I want to play a slightly different game. I want to play a squash version of Pong because I don't have anyone else to play with. So I'm gonna remove this and, and what I want to do is to basically draw three walls here and the game that I want to implement today with this library is basically this, in which this ball will go around, then will return back and I have to try to catch it and not lose it, right? So that's the main game I want to implement to start with. Maybe later on we will add more functionality, right? So uh, to do so, as I said, I want to use object-oriented programming and I want to use uh, also a library. Uh, what is a library? I'm going to start off with that. A library is no more than a collection of code that someone else has actually implemented before, wrote it, and allows us to use it on their behalf. So those um, libraries are typically based on object-oriented programming, and they have multiple classes, multiple functions that we can just simply import and use. And that library that we're going to be using is the one that we use in, in our course, it is just one more library in Python that allows you to play games. It allows you to put nice stuff on the window and paint stuff on your computer and also put some sounds. Is it the best library? If you ask me, Sean, well, who knows, right? Uh, it is relatively stable, uh, but if you try what we're gonna be doing in this video, if you try to do this on a Mac, maybe you kind of disagree with me on that one, yeah? But if you use Linux like I'm doing here, everything will be fine. So you know what I mean, right? So you should be using Linux if you want to. Uh, anyways, so this is a very good library uh, that allows you to do quite a few stuff. Um, and we're gonna be using object-oriented programming. How? So basically, on the scenario that you have, you're gonna have a few things that are, let's say, fixed, right? So you have the green walls, and then you have the paddle and the ball. And these two objects will be actually be moving on the screen and actually we'll be interacting with each other, right? And in interacting with the scenario that we have here. So the ball will have to collide at some point with the walls and then returning back to the paddle, right? So this is why we want to use object-oriented programming because that allows me and allows us basically to create data types that have some sort of function. So basically we're gonna have a ball and that ball is gonna be able to be 
shown somewhere in the screen and to update its position all around, right? And the same thing with the paddle. And the paddle, actually, I want to control it with my mouse. So I want to be able to move and update that position of the paddle. So I want you to think of how the computer will be understanding the game. So basically, the computer understands about pixels. And what we're going to be doing today is just painting. We're going to be painting all the way. So we're going to paint first the display. Um, and then it understands coordinate pixels. So this point here is actually coordinate 0, 0. If this is actually the x and this is the y axis, right? So what is this position? It's the total of x and the total of y, isn't it? So it depends how big our court is. Let's say it's, I don't know, 500, 300, something like that. Something like that, exactly. So what I'm going to do actually is to be a good programmer and I will actually define that with a variable width and height, right? So, and then the actual number, it will depend on, on this, right? So on the values that we give to, to that. And actually this should be width and height minus one, of course, right? Because we start counting from zero. So that's a coordinate. So the way we're gonna be working with Pygang or with any other library, whenever we want to draw something on the screen, you need to tell it okay, you need to go to this point and draw that pixel, right? So that's what we're going to be doing today. The ball, what do you think are the main important attributes of that ball, of that object? What do you think is the main thing? Well, surely when it hits something, it has to rebound or bounce or something. So we need to control collision, right? That's something very cool, uh, very important. We're going to be doing that manually here. Uh, but with actually with Pygain, there is already some stuff that can control collision and help you doing that without doing it manually. But what do you think are the main attributes? So we have this object that will be represented somewhere on the screen. So what we need to know about that ball is coordinates X and Y, right? So that's going to be attributes. And what is the functionality of that ball is to move around without colliding with anything, right? And whenever it collides, you just have to return. So these are the attributes and the functions. And maybe there is something more that we miss, which is how big we want this ball to be, right? And that depends a bit on how we're going to be implementing this. On Pygain, the way that we are going to implement this is with a circle. And for that, you need to define the radius, right? So if I were to define this with object-oriented programming, if we have to define what the ball is, I'm going to represent that in here. I'm going to need coordinate x and why? And I'm gonna need definitely the radius. What about the color? Definitely, that could be something that we can put in as well. The color could be there if you want to. And these two variables could be, if you want to, what we call class variables. A class variable will be always the same value for all the balls that we draw, right? So actually, I'm gonna draw just one single ball, but I might actually end up drawing two different paddles, right? In different positions. So these are the attributes, right? What do you think we can do with the ball? Let's say we want just to show it, right? So we're going to have the functionality to show it and we need to be able to update the position to, to make it move, right? So I'm going to call it update because that's the way I call it in my code that I'm going to be doing later on, okay? So do we need anything else, you think? If you want to start getting fancy into fancy versions of Pong maybe, but I can't see... You need to be able to hide it, do you? Do you need to be hide it? Ah, ha, ha. We will see where we do that. Yes, we're going to be doing that when we update. Yeah, that's actually a very good point, Sean. Uh, there is something else, but uh, we will come back to this uh, in, in, in a minute, right? So what do you think we need for the paddle? So we're going to... Similar, isn't it? I mean, apart from it's probably not going to be round, so it won't take radius. It'll need like a X and Y kind of size as well, but... What do I need for that? So what I need for that is basically width and the height of that particular paddle. So it has nothing to do with the height and the width of my screen, right? It's something just specific for the paddle, right? So that's gonna be a class variable for, for a paddle. What do we need for my game? For, for my game, initially, I told you that I'm gonna be playing this squash version of it in which I only have one paddle. So the X coordinate will remain actually fixed, but the Y is the one I'm gonna be moving, especially with the mouse, if possible, yes? So we could, if we want to, just simply represent Y 
I could put it here. Should we put X? Initially, I'm not gonna be bothered because I just want to do this game, right? So for now, I'm gonna say no. Maybe later on, I will change my mind. In terms of functionality of that particular object, basically, we want to do the same thing. We want to show it and to update the position whenever we want to, right? The only difference is gonna be how I implement that update. The ball will be moving automatically. The paddle will be controlled by the mouse or the keyboard. So it needs to be linked to, yeah, the method of control, right? In some way. Exactly. So here we have now the ball and the paddle. What we think is initially a good definition of how to represent these two objects, right? So as I mentioned before, uh, what we're gonna be doing whenever we play, when, whenever we implement a game on, uh, on a computer is basically drawing stuff. So I want you to help me a bit of thinking what are the different pixels to draw the walls and to draw the puddle initially. And, and let's try to compute and calculate what the, what the coordinates of the different parts of the game are, right? So in yeah. this screen that you see on my iPad right now, we said that here is gonna be zero, zero for this coordinate. And I want to know, how do we draw this wall? It's gonna depend a lot on what the library offers you, but I can tell you, I can anticipate that already, which is gonna be basically a function that allows you to draw a rectangle, right? And then you need to tell it the coordinate in which the rectangle will begin. And then you need yeah. to tell it how big is the rectangle. You need to define width and height of that rectangle. So basically we need to tell this we know from zero, zero to width, yeah? But then we need to tell here what is this size for the wall, right? So what we have here is this width or the border of the wall, right? So we need to define that as well. So that's gonna be another variable in our program. So we need to define how big we want the walls to be, and they should be all of them the same. So what do you think is the coordinates of this point that I'm highlighting here in red? I think um, we're gonna be going, so X is the first uh, coordinate, right? So maybe it's uh, 1000 comma five or something like that. It depends on the screen resolution, right? Yes. So this is a guess because you want to do it for the resolution of your screen, right? But so what I want to do is to do it always relative, right? So we want to do that on a variable that then we set up depending on the size of your screen. So what you could do is to use a variable width for that. So you say that the coordinate of that is gonna be the width, the maximum width, and then this number five that you gave me, five pixels for the border. So it's just basically a variable that we call border. And then we're gonna store there the pixels that we want to use for that. That could be 10, 5, 30, then we can play with that uh, whenever we do the implementation itself, right? So the point is this coordinate is in here. All right, what is the position of the puddle? Haha, <laughs> this one is probably the most difficult one. Well, it's, it's not quite at that so far across, is it? So it's the width minus a bit. Let's say I want to draw the puddle just next to the border of the screen, let's say, right? So I, this is gonna be my puddle here. So again, if you start drawing the paddle from the top left, like we did the rectangle, you've just got to take into account half the size of the paddle as well. There you go. So we, we understand the position of the paddle, like this point here in the center, right? But this is not quite how you actually draw it. Whenever we want to implement that, we need to use what the library actually offers you. And the way we're gonna to have to draw this is a bit annoying because we need to tell this coordinate here. On the top left corner is what Pygain or will use to draw this rectangle here. And then we need to say this is here the width and this is the height of our puddle. So then you need to compute this coordinate first to tell it and then you say what is the width and what is the height. So this is half of the total height minus half of the puddle's height and then that's for, for the y position and for the x position is just width, the total width minus the width of our puddle, right? So it's a bit tricky. You need to make a bit of 
uh, thinking whenever you're drawing a program, right? So you need to think carefully, okay, these are the tools that I have that the library provides me and then I need to come up with the position and how we're going to be moving it. So as you can see, it's actually not that straightforward to do again, right? So basically that's what I wanted to show you here in this first video in which basically we just uh, draw what the game will look like. Uh, we have kind of defined what the ball object will be and half and what the pattern object will be and will have. Uh, might not be exactly the final version of it. We will see that whenever we start implementing it. There are a few tricks that I still want to tell you, but that's going to be in our next video in which we actually go hands on and we're going to be implementing the game uh, live programming on Python. Yeah. Start off by importing the library, right? So if you're gonna be using this, you need to install the library in your computer, right? Um, but whenever you have done that, you need to import Pygame. And the very, very first Rather thing that you need the to program do program in is terms to... of the code we write and how it modifies the data, we think rather...